Great. Thank you very much uh, indeed. And it's, um, it's a real pleasure to, to be here. Um, uh, let me truly uh, um, honored to be on stage, the Prime Minister um, from um, Ethiopia and um, uh, Prime Minister from Barbados, who takes over as DC Chair um, as I exit. Um, and, and it's it's actually quite um, um, uh, a miracle to be here. Um, I had COVID in uh, November um, 23rd, 2020, and um, resulted in some post-COVID uh, complications, which kept me uh, in the US uh, for about five weeks. So I just got back. Uh, but I think for for me, the, the learning is that nexus uh, between healthcare uh, and, and finance. We, in, as ministers of finance, uh, and really looking currently at the global landscape uh, and feeling um, quite sorry for um, sort of the state of the world with, with uh, this whole push on vaccine nationalism. Um, I think we had uh, maybe um, 400 uh, million um, vaccines that uh, have sort of been ordered and 90% of it uh, remains in the developed world, uh, which really puts Africa on the back foot given what we have done um, last year. Uh, and so we need to look at that. Uh, but that in itself uh, shapes um, the whole global landscape um, that uh, Vera has given um, such a clear picture on. Uh, the realization for all of us is that by 2050, uh, Africa will have the most youth and will be a quarter of the world's population. So the whole issue of liquidity and the fluidity um, of this pandemic uh, if we do not tackle it now, uh, and also what we saw with global supply chains, um, especially last year, uh, Africa not industrialized and um, creates a problem um, for, for the global world. Um, so on, on the finance side, you know, we, we have this um, conundrum um, uh, of, um, of liquidity, um, which obviously even with the recent 1.9, um, trillion intervention by the U.S. Uh, indicates uh, they are not only um, helping lives and livelihoods, uh, but moving very quickly towards recovery. Um, we as Ghana are going to the market um, maybe in 10 days or so, or maybe quicker than that. And it is quite clear what we are facing um, because you look at um, economies um, like Morocco, like um, and Greece, um, and Cote d'Ivoire, and Ghana, and you realize um, whilst um, Greece may be going at about 0 0.8, 1.9, um, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire may be doing anywhere north of 4.5. Um, and the question becomes, you know, how do you support debt sustainability uh, when the system is so rigged against you and the ratings are similar? Uh, and this is simply because uh, maybe the ECB has different policies that is helping Greece to come to market. So you have this tension uh, between uh, the multilaterals uh, who have encouraged us to go to market uh, and seeming um, to bring us back um, uh, for them to, to intervene. Uh, and therefore the urgency um, of us coming um, to some conclusions um, on this liquidity such that we do not exacerbate the debt sustainability um, situation um, that, that, that we have. Um, so first of all, the issue of Boston nationalism, uh, hoarding Boston's is, is morally indefensible and it is medically self-defeating uh, because in the end, um, various variants will then occur 
uh, which then really rolls back all the work that the West have done. Um, so it is in everybody's uh, moral interest uh, to make sure um, that we sort this thing out. Ghana is going to have to spend another $240 million into this uh, in a period in which revenues are down and expenditures are up. And I think that goes uh, for the generality of African countries. So there needs to be a sit down um, to really um, tackle, tackle um, this, um, this problem um, that, that we have. And it is urgent and it has to be immediate and, and it is um, it will solve a global global problem. Um, now, when we look at um, uh, sort of the, the injustice of, of this uh, economic conundrum, um, really, uh, in the end, as we have said over and over again, um, the whole financial architecture um, has to be relooked at. It, it is not, there's enough money out there as we have seen um, north of 10 trillion um, that has been able to be marshaled and to support the West uh, and uh, Africa stuttering behind. And that, that cannot uh, be helpful um, to all of us. Um, so I guess in a nutshell for me, in my experience um, over and knowing that post-COVID issues are even going to be more prominent going forward. Um, so the health, um, the economy, uh, the climate are going to be key. How do we give liquidity um, to Africa um, such that um, we will be able to get into a recovery phase? And how do we get a new approach at Vassens um, so that we don't have 90% going to the West? Uh, and therefore give a chance for variants to develop here, um, which then will erase um, the work that the West uh, has done. Um, how do we push the SDRs in a way in which it will support our market-driven activities at present that makes sense um, to us and the world and it's not usurious. And those are going to be um, key issues um, going forward. Uh, because the debt sustainability issues uh, then becomes a problem of the architecture, not necessarily uh, us. Uh, we are therefore expecting a very strong communicate um, after this um, to, to really tease out the issues and show that you know, the interventions in Africa is really for global good. If we are to sustain industrialization extra, uh, I think the minister from Morocco did talk about digitalization. Uh, Africa now is about $347 billion, uh, clearly at 16, 17% of GDP, moved to the 32 OECD of digitalization as a trillion dollars of domestic savings that can then support industrialization, reduce illicit flows, et cetera. Um, so, um, Vera, I just want to thank you um, for this platform. It is going to be critical as we put our ideas uh, through the communique before the spring meetings and put together a coalition of the willing um, to make sure uh, that we stop uh, the pandemic going through three, four, five, six years uh, and rolling back all that we have done. Uh, the numbers, of course, of people getting into poverty are sobering, and as Vera said, it's much more difficult uh, to bring them out, and we can stop that. And we should know uh, by 2050, um, Africa is going to be a quarter of the world's population. And uh, for global prosperity, we need to intervene now, and it will be much cheaper uh, for us for us to do. Um, so Africa's industrialization is a good strategy, not only for Africa but for the world. Uh, in the words of the G20 and then persons group, um, to bend the arc of history, we must succeed in Africa, where the poverty, demographic, and environmental challenges are the largest, and so to the opportunities to contribute to world growth and the global commons. Our approach to beating this pandemic will make a difference between a lost couple of decades and a rapid recovery that puts us on a successful growth trajectory. 
Thank you so much for this. Appreciate the opportunity.